Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today we are going to talk about a creationist contradiction. Today's two arguments. On the one hand, we have genetic entropy, and on the other, little or no junk DNA in the human genome. Before we get into how these arguments are contradictory, I just want to take a moment to introduce each of them on their own terms. Now I want to be clear each of these arguments is wrong for their own reasons. When you just take the two of them independently, they are wrong. And I've linked a bunch of videos down below from me and other people showing why genetic entropy is wrong and why there actually is a lot of junk DNA in the human genome. But that's not the point for today. Today is all about how these two arguments are incompatible with each other. So before we get there, let's just talk about each one briefly. Genetic entropy comes from... Uh, Retired plant geneticist Dr. John Sanford. In 2005, he released the book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome. And the argument he makes, the, the kind of model he puts together there, he says that there is just a barrage of harmful but unselectable mutations that build up in the human genome generation after generation. And eventually, too many of them build up. It has too large a cost uh, in terms of fitness, and this will cause humanity to go extinct. Now, this supports creationism, because if genetic entropy is true, then that requires a recent creation for humanity to exist. If evolutionary time frames are accurate, and humanity is 200 to 300,000 years old, and genetic entropy were true, then humanity would already be extinct. Therefore, genetic entropy shows recent creation. That's the genetic entropy argument. The junk DNA argument, or really the anti-junk DNA argument, is made by lots of creationists. And the data they use to make this argument comes from the ENCODE project and the subsequent work. And both ENCODE and kind of the follow-up projects that have been done and are still in progress were all about looking at the human genome, seeing what's there, and seeing what it does. And the ENCODE project made news in 2012 with this paper that I'm showing on screen called An Integrated Encyclopedia of DNA Elements in the Human Genome. They wrote, these data enabled us to assign biochemical functions for 80% of the genome. Now, it turns out that's not actually true. And again, there are resources down below showing how there is actually a lot of junk DNA in the human genome. But this was a big headline-grabbing finding, and to some extent still is, even 12 years later. Some members of the ENCODE project even went further, one member of the team saying that he expects that 80% to go to 100% functionality within the human genome. Now, the way creationists use this is kind of a bank shot. The way they use the anti-junk DNA argument is to say that it's impossible for evolution to generate and maintain a genome that does not contain any junk DNA. It's impossible for evolution to make and maintain a genome that is almost 100% functional. Therefore, the human genome being almost 100% functional requires a creator. Okay, that's the, the argument that creationists use when it comes to the idea, which is wrong, that there is little or no junk DNA in the human genome. So now let's talk about the contradiction here. As we do this, our main character is going to be Dr. John Sanford because he actually uses both of these arguments in the book, Genetic Entropy, right? He does this exact thing that we're talking about. But as we'll see in a few minutes, he is far from the only creationist that does this. So starting with the idea that there's no junk DNA in the human genome, in his book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome, Sanford writes, quote, it is becoming increasingly clear that most or all of the genome is functional. Pretty clear. He then, uh, actually, in a later edition of the book, I believe this is from the third edition of the book, he actually updates it a little bit with some of the early findings from the ENCODE project, talking about uh, a bunch of papers that they released in 2007. Of those papers, he says, this means that the genome's functionality exceeds 100%. Most of both strands of the DNA are functional. So the message we're getting from Sanford in the book Genetic Entropy is that the genome is close to 100% functional. Dr. Sanford is also very clear in the book that genetic entropy is already affecting humans. He writes, every one of us is a mutant many times over. 
What type of selection scheme could possibly stop this type of loss of information? Remember, in his model, virtually all mutations are harmful. So if lots of mutations are already accumulating, then lots of us are already affected by harmful mutations that are breaking functions in the genome. In the book, Sanford shows this figure, which is the decline in lifespans of the biblical patriarchs, starting with Noah, who lived to 950 years, according to the literalist biblical narrative. And then those lifespans dropped off over the centuries on the x-axis in this figure. We have centuries after Noah, right? Uh, so we're getting close to the present day here, and lifespans drop off over that time by approximately 90%. Now, he's very clear in the figure legend that this is due to the accumulation of mutations. So again, this is figure 14 in the book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome. Sanford writes, when biblical lifespans are plotted against time for the generations after Noah, we see a dramatic decline in life expectancy with a strong appearance of a biological decay curve. The curve is very consistent with the concept of genomic degeneration caused by mutation accumulation. You may already see the problem here, because what Sanford is describing is the already present and already measurable effects of mutation accumulation, of genetic entropy, on the human genome as it currently exists. See the problem? So which is it? Is the human genome so precisely and intricately designed that it approaches 100% functionality and could not possibly have evolved? Or... Is the human genome already breaking down due to an onslaught of mutations that are already taking a measurable toll? Which is it? It can't be both. Both of these things cannot be true at the same time. Now, so far, we've just been talking about Dr. John Sanford and how he makes this uh, mistake in genetic entropy and the mystery of the genome. But he is far from the only creationist to fall into this trap. Creation Ministries International, for example. They uh, wrote a piece by Paul Price, Dr. Rob Carter, and Dr. John Sanford a few years ago, uh, responding to the supposed refutations of genetic entropy from the experts, and I am one of those experts that they respond to in that piece. So Creation Ministries International, they're all in on genetic entropy. But they also talk about how junk DNA is a flawed concept. So they released this video, Junk DNA, There's No Such Thing. And more recently, they released a YouTube short that makes the same argument that the majority of the human genome is functional, although they do allow for a little bit of non-functional DNA. In that longer video, I think they put it at 93% functional. Another example of this from a professional creationist is Sal Cordova. I've talked to Sal about both of these issues. So he is a friend of Dr. John Sanford's. He's worked with Sanford and he is a vocal defender of the concept of genetic entropy. He is also a vocal opponent of the concept of junk DNA in the human genome. And I've talked to him about both of these issues, so he takes both of these positions at the same time. And of course, when the professionals make these arguments together, that filters down to the amateurs. So for example, you have Standing for Truth on YouTube making video after video about genetic entropy while also claiming that junk DNA has been debunked. My point here is that while Dr. John Sanford is a great example of making this contradictory set of arguments because he does it in his book side by side, he's not the only one to do this. This is a very common pitfall that creationists fall into. So in summary, creationists will very frequently argue that the concept of genetic entropy is a real thing that supports a young earth, while also arguing that there is little or no junk DNA in the human genome which supports a creator. But if there's no junk DNA, there's no genetic entropy. The genome is still in its created state. And if there's genetic entropy, there's going to be junk DNA because enough mutations have occurred that we've broken enough of the function in the genome to reduce human lifespans by about 90%, according to Dr. John Sanford. So creationists, here is my plea to you. Please pick one of these arguments and let us know which you prefer. Thank you. And thank you for watching. This has been the creation contradiction of genetic entropy and little or no junk in the human 
genome. Uh, please hit the like button before you leave, maybe leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed, and feel free to share this video. If you're not already a channel member, um, consider becoming a channel member. It's not expensive, and you get early access to uh, pre-recorded videos like this. You'll have access as soon as they go up on YouTube, instead of having to wait for the public release date. Thank you all again for watching, and don't get fooled.